And good morning. Welcome to Concord Baptist Church. Good to have everybody here that is here. And those that aren't here, we couldn't hear. So, yeah. but we're glad for those that we can hear that are here. Amen. Amen. All right. You pray for Brother Steve. Lord, give him a quicker recovery. Amen. Ease his pain. <coughs> and uh, when can he go back on the those meds? <coughs> When can he go back on his meds? They haven't said yet. They haven't said yet. Man. All right. Do it now before I take it home and get it. Unless you've got more money, sit down and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Good to see Johnny back. Part timer. Part timer. Amen. Any other special prayer requests beside my wife and brother Steve? We heard from Tim Jones. Yeah, he's doing good. He's up and running. I haven't heard from brother Travis. Can't get a hold of him. I pray for Kenny's mom. Kenny passed away yesterday about 2.30. Amen. Who is that? Kenny. Kenny. Kenny Williams, a friend of ours. More of that covered. All right. All righty. Go ahead, Brother Tommy. Pray for us. Praise your Father. I want to thank you, Stay Lord. And thank you for praying. Thank you for each and every one that can make it here today. I want to come in, Lord. Thank you for service. Pray you give them travel mercy to get here safe and whole. Lord, I just pray you give the pastor the message today, Lord, and be in Sunday school class, Dale, as he does travel blood. Lord, just give him clarity. Lord, just everybody come up. Just pray to everybody. I pray up today, Lord, to come to hear from you and receive your word. And be sure to give you all the praise, the honor, and glory. I pray for Brother Steve, Lord, and lift him up to you. Yeah, amen. And Sister Linda and the others that are out, Lord, and Kenny's mother that Tim was talking about, Lord, I just want to lift them all up to you, Lord, that you can touch and heal them, Lord, and, and just comfort them this day, Lord. We'll be sure to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Lord, the precious name of Lord Jesus Christ, I do pray and ask these things. Amen. 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 Pray for us. We've, I've been looking at, it's funny, Brother Dave's son got into bees, and I've been looking at him a while, so I drove up Friday to get my beehives. I didn't want them shipped because they'd be together, but I uh, can't get my bees till the end of March. But uh, I'm hoping, I got the girls each a suit, and I'm hoping they'll be able to handle them. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you getting the bees from? Huh? Do you got a name of the guy you're getting the bees from? Up in uh, Toccoa, Georgia. It's uh, mountain honey. Huh? Yeah, he liked the good stuff. I w I've been looking online and looking at this stuff and reading. I've been doing a lot of reading and gardening and beekeeping and everything. I said, I like my honey. My wife, too. And, uh, <laughs> but anyway, I figure Ryan, he's been in classes. I haven't, so I'm hoping that I can glean off of him in the future. <laughs> hey man, <laughs> know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, well, there's a lot to it. Yeah, that's why he's going to class. And get the girls to go. <laughs> man, I got a friend that her, her pleasure is called the Beatitudes. The <laughs> Beatitudes. <laughs> yeah, they say some of them bees can get an attitude, but these are. I got the wimpy ones. I got the Italian bees. <laughs> Amen. All right, Brother Tim, you ready to lead us in a song? Absolutely. All right. Remember, you're the excitement. Absolutely. He's the excitement. <laughs> yeah. What page number is it? 476. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, good morning, Concord Baptist Church. Good morning. Oh, yeah, you little stinker. 
All right, please stand and turn to page 477. As soon as I do, don't beat me to it. At Calvary. Oh, that's terrible. Can I turn the camera the other way? Then I want you to see what we have to look at. You gotta be so mean while I'm trying to do something. Jesus help us. Oh, yes. Simpson and welcome to Concord Independent Baptist Church.com. And for those of us on Facebook, well, I think about it, I forgot to pray for Teresa. Pray for Teresa. Yeah, when you get a chance there, throw that in there. Okay. Um, it's her head. It's disgusting. <laughs> it's hurting. I'm hurting. I mean, <laughs> okay. Well, you heard it first right here. <laughs> Linda Townsend's head is. Uh, <laughs> Got something in ailing it. Uh, once again, here uh, those on Facebook, it's Frank Townsend, T-O-W-N-S-E-N-D, which brings around the thought that uh, I was at Lowe's the other day, and out in the parking lot, there was a COVID-19 testing station. So you could get tested for Kung Flu right there for free. And... Uh, Preach, I think you're in luck there. They were doing uh, what I'll affectionately call butt swabs. So you can. <laughs> I think they called it anal swabs, but. Uh, yeah. You. Yeah, that's a terrible thought. I had to. I told, I told him, my, the lady come around, but sir, you didn't fill out your form. I said. 
You don't know who I am? Really? I'm on Facebook. I'm on the internet. Concord Independent Baptist Church dot com. You don't know who I am? And she goes, I've never seen you before in my life. I said, my name is Frank Townsend. D O W N S E N D. All right, uh, let's get serious here for a minute. We are going to continue on today in the J M Carroll novel, or not novel, J M Carroll book on uh, the Trail of Blood. We're going to be, we're getting down to the uh, last rows here. We're on page 52. And we'll start up there with James Ireland, who I did not get a chance to research this weekend, but uh, we will uh, get him at a later date. And First, let's open up with a quick word of prayer here. Most gracious Heavenly Father, it's a beautiful Sunday morning here with a little liquid sunshine falling, and we give thanks for everything that we have on loan from you, Lord. And Lord, I ask you, that you look down and forgive me for anything that may be not pleasing in your sight. And Lord, I'll ask again to uh, to show some mercy and compassion to my prayer list. It's it's really long, and and Linda is uh, under the weather again, and we uh, ask the healing hand as only you can, and the great physician that you are. Lord, all of the folks that are on there, please lift them up, Lord, and and cradle them and 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 give them some some of the medicinal elements that only you can give lord and lord give me the verbal clarity to convey a message this morning which would be both insightful and informative and these things i ask in jesus name i pray amen all right uh we're gonna continue on here i may come out of this jacket here in just a minute i can feel the heat Coming down on my head. Hey, glory to God. Now hey, look, look, look at here. All right, we're uh, James Ireland is a case in point. He was imprisoned. After imprisonment, his enemies tried to blow him up with gunpowder. That having failed, they next tried to smother him to death by burning sulfur under his windows at the jail. Burning sulfur can smell like a poop. Boy, poop to death. Uh, failing also in this, they tried to arrange with a doctor to poison him. That would be easy in this day and age, I believe. All this failed. He continued to preach to his people from the windows of the jail. A wall was built around the jail so the people could not see in or he see out. But even that difficulty was overcome. The people gathered. A handkerchief was tied to a long stick and they stuck it above the wall so Ireland could see when there were when they were ready the preaching continued and this persistence I think is very admirable and we should not give up continue to preach Amen. three Baptist preachers Lewis and Joseph Craig and Aaron Bledsoe were later arrested on the same charge one of them at least was a blood relative of R.E.B. Baylor, and that would be uh, Baylor University, and possibly of one or more other Texan Baptist preachers. These preachers were arraigned for trial. Patrick Henry, hearing of it, and thought, and though living many miles away, and through a church of, though a, uh, though a Church of England man himself rode those miles horseback to the trial and volunteered his services in their defense. And that would be Patrick Henry of give me liberty or give me death. Uh, great was his defense. I cannot enter into a description of it here. It swept the court and the preachers were freed. Uh, else where then Rhode Island religious liberty came slowly and by degrees. For example, in Virginia, a law was passed permitting one, but only one, Baptist preacher for a county. <laughs> I mean, we laugh at this, but this is the sad truth that um, even here in this country, we were getting persecuted by the establishment. Uh, he was permitted to preach, but once in two months, 
Later, the law was modified, permit, permitting him to preach once in each month. Well, that's an improvement. Uh, but even then, in only one definite place in the county, and only one sermon on that day, and never to preach at night. Well, <clears throat> uh, traveling at night back in those days had to have been a rather arduous journey. Uh, they didn't have any headlights for their horses, and I guess you had to just follow along by moonlight. <laughs> uh, laws were passed not only in Virginia, but in the colonies elsewhere, positively forbidding any mission work. Uh, this was what this was why Judson was the first foreign missionary. The law forbid. It took a long time and for and many hard battles in the Virginia House of Burgesses to greatly modify these laws. And I remind everybody that the uh, Virginia is a commonwealth, and they have some. Uh, different terms for like our House of Representatives. I think that is the House of Burgesses. Uh, also, Kentucky and Louisiana also use some uh, different language there when it comes to the legislatures. Uh, evidently, one of the greatest obstructions to religious liberty in America and probably all over the world as to that was the conviction which had grown into the grown into the people throughout the preceding centuries that religion could not possibly live without governmental support. That no denomination could pros prosper solely on voluntary offerings by its adherents. And this was the hard argument to meet when the battle was raging for the disestablishment of the Church of England in Virginia and also later in Congress when the question of religious liberty was being discussed there. For a long time, the Baptists fought the battle almost alone. Rhode Island began her colony in 1638, but it was not legally chartered until 1633. This was the first spot where religious liberty was granted. The second place was Virginia in 1786. And do the math. That's what, 148 years? <laughs> that is a long time span that it took to get from Rhode Island to Virginia. Uh, Congress declared the First Amendment to the Constitution to be enforced December the 15th of 1791, which granted religious liberty to all citizens. Baptists are credited, yay, with being the leaders and bringing this blessing to the nation. We venture to give one early congressional incident. The question of whether the United States should have an established church or several established churches or religious liberty was first was being discussed. Several different bills had been offered one recommending the Church of England as the established church, and another the Congregationalist Church, and yet another the Presbyterian. The Baptists, many of them, though probably none of them members of Congress, were earnestly contending for absolute religious liberty. James Madison, afterwards later becoming president, seemingly was their main supporter. Patrick Henry arose and offered a substitute bill for them for them all that four churches or denominations instead of one be established the Church of England or Episcopal the Congregationalist the Presbyterian and the Baptist finally no 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 yeah finally when each of the others saw that it could not be made the sole established church they each agreed to accept Henry's compromise. This compromise bill stated that each person taxed would have the right to say which denomination of these four his money should go. And here we go, the Baptists again, continued to fight against it all, stating that any combination of the church and the state was against the fundamental principles that they could not accept even if voted. Henry pleaded with them, 
said he was trying to help them, but they could not live without it, but they still protested. The vote was taken. It carried nearly unanimous, unanimously, but the measure had to be voted on three times. The Baptists, led by Madison and possibly others, continued to fight, and that was to fight against this. The second vote came. It also carried among uh, almost unanimously, swept by Henry's masterful eloquence. But the third vote had yet to be taken. Now God seemingly intervened. Henry was made the governor of Virginia and left Congress. When the third vote came, deprived of Henry's irresistible eloquence, the vote was lost. Yay! <laughs> Thus the Baptist came near to being an established domination denomination over their own most solemn protest. This is not the only opportunity the Baptists have had of becoming established by law, but is probably the nearest they ever came to it. Not long after this, the Church of England was entirely disestablished in America. No religious denomination was supported by the central government. A few separate, a few separate state governments still had establishment. Church and state, so far as the United States was concerned, were entirely separated. These two, church and state, elsewhere at least, had for 1,500 years since A.D. 313, and pop quiz, what happened in 313? The Council of Nicaea. Roman Emperor Constantine. Yeah. Yeah. Council of Nicaea. Uh, religious liberty was at least here in the United States restricted to die no more and now gradually, but in many places slowly, it was spreading throughout the world. But even in the United States, the church and state idea died hard. It lingered on in several of the separate states long after religious liberty had been put in the Constitution of the United States. Massachusetts, where the church and state idea first found a lodging place in America, has, as always stated, finally given it up. It had lived there only two and one half centuries. Utah is the last lingering spot left to disfigure the face of the first and greatest nation on the earth to adopt and relish religious liberty. Remember, there can be no real absolute religious liberty in any nation where the government gives its support to one special religious domination, uh, denomination. And that being said there, Utah doesn't still stand by that. This book was written over 100 years ago. I don't think it does. Now, if there's any, everybody knows what goes on in Utah, which is Mormonism or Moronism. Uh, pardon to some of those people that might be listening out there. Uh, there's still hope for you. Uh, <laughs> some serious questions may uh, have many times been asked concerning the Baptists. Would they, as a denomination, have accepted from any nation or state an offering of an establishment if such nation or state had freely made them such an offer? And would they, in case they had accepted such an offer, have become persecutors of other like Catholics, Episcopals, and Lutherans, or Presbyterians, or Congregationalists? Probably a little consideration of such a question now would not be amiss. Have the Baptists, as a fact, ever had such an opportunity. It is not recorded in history that on one occasion the king of the Netherlands, the Netherlands at that time embracing Norway, Sweden, Belgium, Holland, and Denmark, had under serious consideration the question of having an established religion. Their kingdom at the period was surrounded almost all sides by nations or governments with established religions, religions re supported by the civil government. As you know, the Germans, the French, and probably even the North Sea, 
all had their established religions. It is stated that the King of Holland appointed a committee to examine into the to examine into the claims of an existing church churches or denominations to see which had the best claim to be the New Testament church. I wonder who that was. Uh, the committee reported back that the Baptists were the best. Yay! Representatives of the New Testament teachings. Then the king offered to make the Baptists the established church or denomination of his kingdom. And then the Baptists kindly thanked him, but declined, stating that it was contrary to their fundamental convictions and principles. But this was not the only opportunity they ever had for having their denomination the established religion of a people. They certainly had an opportunity when Rhode Island, when the Rhode Island colony was founded, and to have persecuted others would have been an impossibility if they were to continue being Baptist. Read between the lines there. We are not to chastise the other guys. <laughs> for their ill-begotten beliefs. <laughs> but it is our duty. <laughs> they were the original advocates of religious liberty. That really is, is one of the fundamental articles of their religious faith. They believed in absolute separation of church and state, and we all do today. So strong has been the Baptist conviction on the question of church and state combination that they have invariably declined all offers to help from the state. We give here two instances, one from Texas and the other one from Mexico. Long years ago in the days of Baylor University's babyhood, Texas offered to help her. She declined the help, though it was in distress. It was in distressing need. The Texas Methodist, and I believe that is Southern Methodist, wouldn't it be? Anybody? Yeah, probably uh, Southern Methodist, which is in Dallas, I believe. Uh, had a baby school in Texas at the time, at the same time. They accepted state help. That school finally fell into the hands of the state. The case in Mexico occurred in this wise. W.D. Powell was our missionary to Mexico. By his missionary work, he had made a great impression for the Baptists upon Governor Maduro of the state of Coahuila. Maduro offered a great gift to the Baptists from the state. If the Baptists could establish a school in the state of Coahuila, Mexico, the matter was submitted by Powell to the foreign board. The gift was declined because it was from the state. Afterwards, Maduro gave a large sum personally. That was accepted. And Maduro Institute was built and established. And I'm wondering if that still is uh, a viable <coughs> missionary works in Mexico today. We will add that to our itinerary for the next couple of weeks. <clears throat> Some afterwards. During every period of the Dark Ages, there were in existence many Christians and many separate and independent churches, some of them dating back to the times of the apostles, which were never in any way connected to the Catholic Church. They always wholly rejected and repudiated the Catholics and their doctrines. This is a fact clearly demonstrated by credible history. These Christians were perpetual object, objects of bitter and relentless persecution. History shows that during this period of the Dark Ages, about 12 centuries there, beginning in AD 426, there were about 50 million of these Christians who died martyrs' deaths. Very many thousands of others, both preceding and succeeding, the Dark Ages died under the same hard hand of persecution. These Christians during the Dark Ages of many centuries 
were called by many different names, all given to them by their enemies. These names were sometimes given because of some specialty, predominant or heroic leader, and sometimes from other causes. And sometimes, yay, many times the same people holding the same views were called by different names in different localities. But amid all of the many changes of names, there is one special name, yay, we're special, or rather designation, which clung to at least some of the Christians throughout all the dark ages, that designation being Anabaptist. This compound word applied as a designation of some certain Christians was first found in history during the third century and a suggestive fact soon after the origin of infant baptism and more suggestive fact even prior to the use of the name Catholic. Thus the name Anabaptist is the oldest denomination name in history. Woohoo! We got something to hang our hat on. A strikingly peculiarity of these Christians was and continued to be in succeeding centuries. They rejected the mandate doctrine of infant baptism and demanded rebaptism, even though done by immersion for all of those who came to them, having been baptized in infancy. For this peculiarity, they were called Anabaptists, which means rebaptism. And we start getting into the technicality of if you were baptized as an infant, were you really baptized? No. no. So it's a little technicality there, but I wear that badge if anybody wants to stick it on my back. And uh, into the dark ages, well, where am I here to? This special, special designation was applied to many of these Christians who bore the nicknames. Especially, is this true of the Donalist, the Paulicans, the Albigenes, and the ancient Waldenese, and others? In later, since, in later centuries, this designation, designation came to be a regular name applied to a distinct, distinct group. These were simply called Anabaptists, and gradually all other names were dropped. Very early in the 16th century, even prior to the origin of the Lutheran Church, the first of all the Protestant churches, the word Anna was beginning to be left off, and they were simply called Baptist, and that is us. Into the Dark Ages, when a group of many churches which were never in any way identified with the Catholics, out of the Dark Ages came a group of many churches which had never been in any way identified with the Catholics. I sound like redundancy here. The following are some of the fundamental doctrines to which they held when they went in. The same are the fundamental doctrines to which they held when they came out and the same are fundamental doctrines to which they now hold. And we will flip over to page 58. And there's a refresher here. A spiritual church, Christ is the founder. It is the head and law giver. And it is our founder. Its ordinances, only two, baptism and the Lord's Supper. They are typical and memorial not saying. Its officers, only two, bishops or pastors and deacons. They are the servants of the church. Its government, a pure democracy, and that executive only, never legislative. Its laws and doctrines, the New Testament, and that only. Its members, believers only, they save by grace, amen, not works, amen, through the regenerating power of the Holy Spirit, amen. It's requirement, believers on entering the church to be baptized, that by immersion, then obedience and loyalty to all New Testament laws. 
this is cut and dry, everybody. So if you have still issues in your life, you need to get them out. The various churches, separate and independent in their execution of laws and discipline and in their responsibilities to God, but cooperative in work. Complete separation of church and state. Absolute religious liberty for all. And that concludes the book here. If you look here, the next page, it is the credits for where J.M. Carroll got much of his material. It is a rather long two pages worth, but it is worth going over at some point. If you get a chance, you will see some just cornerstones of the Baptist religion here uh, that that J.M. Carroll used his, for his material. It is an absolutely fascinating read, and I, it has been my pleasure to stand here before you and read this book to you and study it in our Sunday school. And I thank everyone for being patient with me here <laughs> and uh, suffering through some of the pronunciations that I struggle with. But uh, once again here, in everything you do, Preach Jesus, and if you have to, use words. Thank you. Amen. <clears throat>
a long time ago, I had to search it out. And I prayed and I struggled with it. And in prayer and all in scripture, if you're a Christian, you're trying to do something for the Lord. And you're out there, you're working, your life's done changed. And all of a sudden you wonder, am I really saved or not? And if the devil can get you to do that, then you become, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not useful. Because what you're doing is you doubt yourself so much you can't preach to others. But then there's folks that doubt. It's not really doubt. It could be conviction where God is trying to show them that they are lost. Amen. They had a religious experience when they were five, six, seven, eight, nine years old or whatever. Uh, but I think what we do is we take regeneration with its fruit and preach it more than we preach Christ. Amen. And so we're going to look at the difference. But uh, there ought to be a change in our lives. But that change of our lives does not constitute salvation. It doesn't mean that you're saved because you change some things in your life. Some things just change with old age. I mean, I can't run as fast as I used to to chase down all the models. You know, <laughs> just joking, hon. You're the one for me. <laughs> Amen. And <laughs> she's feeling bad. I'm trying to cheer her up. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Uh, wouldn't that cheer you up, Grace, if your husband said that? <laughs> He's getting his knees fixed so he can chase her around. Amen. <laughs> Be sure to remember to pray for him and uh, Brother Steve while he's recovering and uh, pray for Teresa. Just look at her face. I mean, really, look at it. You see the pain? You can tell she's in pain. Amen. Right. <laughs> and uh, and look at look at Tim's. I mean, you can tell we're in pain. <laughs> anyway, uh, pray for Kevin and uh, Petra. Kevin's on the road and Petra. I haven't heard from her, so I don't know if she's going to make it today or not. And. Uh, you said Derek is with the family today and Samantha is babysitting. Where's uh, Victoria? Oh, okay. We church started at 10. Amen. All right. Brother Dave dismisses in prayer. We'll take a break and we'll come back at 11, Lord willing. Amen. My Lord, my God, my Savior, Lord. Again, we do thank you for this day, Lord God. Father, we do thank you for uh, Dale and the uh, lesson he gave, Lord, and a needful lesson for us, Lord, and Father, I, I pray that you bless him, Lord, uh, for doing the work that he's done and the study, Lord, and Father, that uh, you encourage him, Lord, and, and uh, keep him going on the next lessons, Lord, and Father, we pray you dismiss us here for a few minutes, Lord, uh, Father, and that uh, we'll all come back together here, and, and then, uh, prayer and open heart, Lord, and Father, to receive the message that's forthcoming. And we'll thank you and praise you. Lord Jesus Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.